Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, got a new video for you right here. Um, I'm not feeling totally that great today, kind of feeling under the weather. So I figured, wow, what a perfect time to explore some pitch correction just using Ableton. Um, I think that the immediate thought is that you probably need a pitch correcting software like Auto-Tune or Melodyne or something to adjust uh, pitch problems uh, from your singing tracks um, or even from maybe even your guitar tracks or your trombone or whatever. Um, you don't necessarily need that software. All you need is to use Ableton's tuner and your own ears to fix the pitch. And the cool thing is that Ableton gives you a lot of extra options when uh, it comes to how you want to stretch and manipulate the audio so you don't get those weird like robotic um, pitch effects that you get from using Autotune. Like a lot of times you can tell someone's using Autotune right away. Well, anyway, um, I recorded this sultry R&B groove. <laughs> uh, that I decided to sing over and this is what uh this is what it sounds like and here's my really bad vocal with which to correct my voice likely sounds like crap Okay, so as you can tell, there's a couple glaring problems with that track. And uh, the first thing to do is you just want to go into your audio effects and grab tuner and drop it on the track. And then you can, while the track is playing, you can watch where the pitch problems come in. My voice likely sounds like crap. So on this tuner, um, you can obviously tell that a lot of the times I was a little sharp. Um, I was kind of 20 to 30 cents sharp. These little, this number here, negative 50, positive 50, these are uh, the pitch sense, okay? When you look at a track, in, if you double click on the top bar and you look at a track, you have detune by the amount of cents. 100 cents equals one semitone. So la, 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 la. That's one semitone, okay? Um, so you can use the detune to change the sense while you, you know, you can even play the audio and listen to it. So let's take a listen to this while I change the sense. My voice likely sounds like crap. So now I'm I'm negative fifty cents, but as you can hear, if you listen closely, you can hear a bunch of audio artifacts coming in. My voice likely sounds like crap. And yes, it does. I agree with you, Anthony. It does sound like crap. So how do you fix this? And also, how do you change just certain parts of the audio that are out of tune? Well, I think the first thing to do, and let, let's try to be methodical about this, is I play each one of these parts and watch the tuner for, for where there needs to be correction, as well as use my ears. The tuner is going to be able to grab only so much information. The other thing to think about is that the tuner can only, it needs to listen to the audio long enough to be able to render um, its result. So sometimes using your ears is even more important. But let's go ahead and listen to this and try to find our, our problem areas. My boy. So my first note, I can see right away, is a little flat, meaning that it's it's not all the way up to the pitch. It's a little bit lower than the pitch I want. My Right? Take a look. It'll be, it'll be just below. My boy. So, if I just visually take a look at this, this is zero, okay? Zero means we're, we're exactly right. And negative 50 is, is half the way to the other semitone lower. I can actually take a look at here and be like, okay, I can start to break this down. So, that would be like negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, and then 50. So, let's just take a look at this again. In fact, something you can do is just loop this. I'm going to solo this out. <laughs> I'm really barren myself right now in front of everybody, but this is this is my uh, my my soloed voice that's slightly flat. So I'm looking right here, and I can see that it's kind of hanging out right there. So what I want to do is really try to isolate this specific pitch. So that little end part, I don't want to. I don't want to isolate that. Okay, but the thing is that the loop bar can only loop such a small amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this loop bar off. Okay, and what I can do is I can just click and drag and kind of just select this my 
spot right here, okay? And then hit Command E. What that does is it splits this audio into a different clip, okay? Here's a new clip. Now this clip can be manipulated different than this one and this one. So I hope you, you're starting to get how this is done. So I know that this is about, I would say about, let's say 15 cents flat. So now, as you can see, I can just click on the cents and pull the cents up to about 15, okay? Everything else is still at zero. All right, so let's go ahead and play this while looking at the tuner. My voice. So I got pretty close there. My voice. My voice. In fact, I think that's pretty good. However, can you hear the artifacts? Take a deep listen. My voice. Yeah. So there's some artifacts in there. And what do I mean by artifacts? Little little uh, uh, bleeps and blops and, and, and sloppy little clicky sounds in there. So, so the way we can get rid of those is we, we go into the different warp modes. Fortunately, Ableton has different warp modes. for I mean, What we're essentially doing is we're stretching this audio so that its pitch changes. Okay. And, and, and I think what, what happens when you, when you push the sense up is what you're doing is you're actually speeding the audio up and then Ableton's trying to compensate for speeding the audio up by stretching it out, okay? So what we need to do is choose a type of warp mode that's a little bit easier on held notes. So the first thing I would think of is tones, okay? Um, when I turn it on tones mode, it says for clearly pitched audio. So <laughs> seems like the way to go, right? All right, so let's go ahead and take a listen to this now. My voice. Now, I can still hear a little bit of right at the beginning, you can hear that, my voice, my voice, right? So let's try a different mode. A lot of the times I find myself going to complex or complex pro. Let's listen to what happens here. My voice, my voice. Boom. That's exactly what we needed to do. We put it on complex mode. What complex mode is for is adjusting for pitch, but also adjusting for beats. A lot of the times when you're doing like you're stretching audio or you you have a DJ set and you've got a bunch of different... Uh, tempos and a bunch of different pitches and stuff going on, a lot of the times the complex mode will kind of solve all these little problems. The only thing is, is that using complex mode takes a little bit more, of course, resources. All right, so now let's take a look at the tuner. My voice. Okay, so now we can see we've, we've hit that first note. So let's go ahead and play this with the instruments to really, really, to really check it out. I mean, a lot of the times you can get the pitch right here, but maybe it sounds wrong now with the instruments. Let's go ahead and listen to everything. So I played it a little bit earlier to get the feel. My voice likely. Cool. So now that, that first note, that's great. And now we can enter this. A lot of the times, like first notes, singers are kind of getting they're just getting ready. They're getting ready to sing. They're they're not even they're not even ready yet, you know what I mean? And 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 the first couple notes can can be bad, especially when you've got a take that you've got from somebody else, maybe they sent it to you over the internet. You don't have a chance to re-record. So a lot of the times this is what you're gonna have to do. Um it's also an isolated note. When you have an isolated note, a lot of the times that means that the delay and reverb applied to that note are going to play over top of everything else. And so if, if that's wrong, if that note is wrong, then you're going to have wrong delay. You're going to have wrong reverb. You're going to have just wrong pitches just everywhere. So <laughs> getting the source right is really important. So let's, let's go to another spot and do the same, the same action. This likely sounds like crap. Voice likely. Voice like. So likely. Likely is horribly flat, it sounds. Like, like, like. Or, or sharp. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to try to loop just this section. And uh, as you can see, when I, when I go to loop, I only have so many. It can only get, it can only loop such a small amount of audio. So let's just solo this out. Likely, 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 likely. It's actually a little sharp. So just select the audio. Command E or Control E on Windows. Double click on that new clip, and since it's a little sharp, we're gonna pull it down. It looks to me to be about 10 cents. Voice likely, 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 likely. Cool, getting closer. It's actually 15. Sounds like 15 today is my horribly lucky number. <laughs> Voice likely, likely, likely. Cool, so we fixed that. Moving on. Uh, well, actually, I did hear some artifacts. Likely, likely. Hear that? Uh. Likely, likely. So I'm gonna try that. I'm just to, just to save time. We're gonna try the uh, complex mode. Likely. Boom. Like my voice. Like now my voice is starting to sound good. So let's go to another area. 
Take a look at that tuner. Please sounds like, please sounds like, please sounds like. So sounds is is a little sounds, 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 a little sharp, but we're gonna let we're gonna let that go. Please sounds like, like. Now like though the word like I should say uh, is is once again a little sharp. Seems like today was my day to be sharp. Like, even though I don't feel sharp. Sounds like. So what I'm gonna do is I just sorry, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Click and drag. Okay, and then you know you don't have to have the right now. I have the uh, uh, quantizer on. Uh, it's better to just turn that off. Right click, click on off. Then you can just click exactly where you want to. Okay, I clicked and drag. I'm selecting it. Command E. Now I've got this clip isolated, and let's just take a look at the tuner one more time. It's like, it's like. Yeah, just way sharp. Almost looks like 20 cents or more. So I'm gonna pull that down, 20 cents. Let's watch the pitch. It's like much better, much better. Maybe even 25. It's a real bad note. Um, put it on complex. It's likely sounds like crap. Boom. Sounds great. Likely sounds like crap. Now, um, another thing to think about is that this is preserving the way that my voice sounds when I hit that note. A lot of the times with, with things like autotune, it's modulating your voice in a way that doesn't sound natural, doesn't sound like your voice. That's, that's what this, this process is doing. Now, th those, those processes are faster. Um, you know, autotune can, can fix pitches uh, very quickly and do it in, almost in real time. Um, so you can just put the pitch of whatever you're you know, recording to in there. But you're going to get that robot sound. Um, what I've got going on here is this. This sounds like me. My voice likely sounds like crap. Right? So let's just keep going. Now, this is, this is a good example. Here's, here's a more difficult move. This is going to be a more acrobatic uh, uh, pitch fix because I'm holding one long, continuous uh, 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 sound and I'm changing the notes in it. So let's listen to this and watch the tuner. Like crap. Crap. Now, notice what's happening crap <laughs> is being held uh, across two different notes. So what we need to do is, is kind of visually see and then listen to where the, pr the pitch correction needs to be. Crap. Now, I like the, the second half of this. It's kind of close enough. It's within 10 cents of being right, but the first half of it is sharp, right? Watch it again. Crap. Crap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select that first part, Command E, Let's take a look, and I'm going to, well, let's take one more look at that tuner. Crap, crap. And as you can see, it's probably about 15 cents sharp. So we're going to go down 15 cents, put it on complex, take a listen. Crap, crap. And as you can see, using complex kind of made it sound strange. Let's try tones. Crap. Oh, look at that. There was a weird kind of sound that happened when I used complex, so I switched it to tones. This is your flexibility right here, you know? You don't have just one mode. You have all this different... Like crap. And the other thing is that because the audio is still in phase right here, and it has this crossover, um, if you start to run into issues where the, the corrected pitch and then the next natural pitch is weird you can always use your 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 uh your fade bars to kind of fade in and try to cover up any of those potential clicks or pops that might happen between those uh i, I was hoping that one would surface so i could show it to you but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen today like crap, crap. so uh now we've got all the way my voice likely sounds like crap no it doesn't anthony it sounds great all right, so we've got this part fixed. Uh, I hope you guys get it. I'm just going to do one more. This, this last little thing, this is a good example of what happens when you sing a real bad note and you can hear the reverb of it. Listen to this last. Crap, crap. Woo! Super bad. Crap, crap, crap. So I'm a little flat. I'm going to select this, Command E, and I'm going to bump it up. Let's try 10. Put it on complex. Crap. Crap. Still a bit flat. 15. 
My lucky number. Crap. Boom. Ooh, it went up 30. I did not mean to do that. Let's go back to 20. Pink. Help. Crap. Oh, did you hear that? I'm glad that happened. Listen to how strange this sounds. Crap. Almost like there's Crap. two of me. So I'm going to switch it back to tones and see if we can defeat that. Crap. Cool. Now it sounds like a, not a phasey audio. It sounds like one audio. Crap. Cool. All right. So there you have it. I'm just going into each one of these little sections, trying to find pitch problems and changing them. Obviously, I should say, most of the time, if you want to have the absolute best audible results, you'll just re-record the, the, the audio. If you have the luxury and you have the time, try to get the track good before you have to do anything like this. Um, it's going to sound more natural. You're always going to have caveats when you're stretching or you're changing the pitch of audio in post, okay? But um, I, I, I got to say, most of the time, changing the pitch to, to be closer to correct is going to sound better than you going in there and just leaving a flat or a sharp note uh, and having the delay and reverb just, just play forever. So cool. I hope that this uh, is an awesome thing and it saves you the money and the time of trying to learn another uh, plugin and you just use Ableton's built-in uh, pitch changing properties and uh, warp modes to fix your bad pitch audio. All right. Hope you enjoy this video. Hope you use it. See you guys next time. Thanks.